The Winton Formation New dinosaur sites have been reported in Queensland, Australia, in the region located within the central Eramanga Basin as part of the southern central Winton Formation. The Winton Formation is widely distributed, stretching from just north of Winton in central western Queensland into New South Wales and South Australia. This formation is a thick set of sedimentary rocks which are the uppermost rock sequence in the Great Artesian Basin. The rocks are mostly consisting of interbedded volcanolithic sandstones, siltstones, mudstones, and minor coals known from drill holes made deep through the rock unit and intraformational conglomerates. The present-day thickness of the Winton Formation ranges from a thin layer in the northern area to at least 1,100 meters of thickness toward the west-southwestern parts of the basin. The Eramanga was an inland sea that covered large parts of Queensland and Central Australia a minimum of four times during the early Cretaceous period. A huge amount of sediment would be brought and streamed across the plains by the rivers the size of today's Amazon or Mississippi. Residue filled the riverbanks, lakes and ponds, and the inland sea slowly diminished. By around 95 million years ago, the deposition was complete and the inland sea would never be seen again. Fossils of crocodiles, fish, turtles, insects, freshwater mussels and dinosaurs, such as Australovenator, Australotitan, Diamantinosaurus, Savannosaurus, and Wintonitan are found in the Winton Formation. These are of the Cretaceous age and are between 98 to 95 million years old. The fossils suggest that there was a period of global warming and titanosaurs had dispersed from South America, migrating across Antarctica and entering the landmass that was later to become Australia, before the cold conditions prevented them from doing so. Leaf fossils show that the climate was warm, with subtropical temperatures, marked seasons and abundant rainfall. Although there was no extreme cycle between the wet season and dry season, as is the case today. Average temperatures of up to 35 degrees Celsius occurred in the oceans. However, weather patterns also appeared to have been cyclical on a multi-year basis, similar to the modern Pacific Decadal Oscillation. This may also have influenced the sporadic flooding. The vegetation growing season would have been eight to nine months long. Sauropods fed on conifers and angiosperms that were common plants in the Winton Formation. Conifers included the cypresses, the ericaceas, the oricarias, and the potocarp Protophyllocraxilon. Angiosperms included Lovelia and various unnamed forms. There was abundance of other plants, including the ferns, the liverwort Marcantites, the horsetail Equestitaes, the Benetitalians, Otozamites, and Tylophyllum, and the Gingocadian Ginkgo. The Australian sauropods from the Cretaceous are titanosaurs, or titanosauriforms. Typical titanosaurs would have had small heads and delicate, pencil-like teeth, big nostrils, broad shoulders, and narrow hips, and robust forelimbs with elongated metacarpal bones. The sauropod titans had some kind of osteodermis on their skin. Apart from Australotitan, the rest of them are pretty small by sauropod standards. Australian soil, particularly in the north, is quite acidic. Therefore, fossils being found are rare. It is possible that many species' bones have not yet been discovered. These huge sauropods were preyed on by a theropod such as Australovenator. It is likely that they would attack juvenile or sick dinosaurs and left the larger ones alone.
Australotitan cooperensis. Named by Scott A. Hocknell, Melvin Wilkinson, Rochelle A. Lawrence, Vladislav Konstantinov, Stuart McKenzie, and Robin McKenzie in 2021. The name's meaning is derived from Australo, or Southern, and Titan, being giant. Together meaning Southern Titan, or Southern Giant. It was nicknamed Cooper, which was taken from the Cooper Eramanga Basin from a nearby freshwater lifeline called Cooper Creek. Australia Titan is the largest dinosaur species ever discovered in Australia. The discovery confirms the presence of gigantic titanosaurian sauropods in eastern Gondwana during the mid-Cretaceous period. Australia Titan was also the largest land-dwelling species to ever walk the outback. It is estimated that this sauropod lived in southwest Queensland in the middle Cretaceous between 100 and 95 million years ago. At the time, Australia was attached to Antarctica and the last traces of the Great Inland Sea had disappeared. Due to Queensland's featureless, relatively flat plains, finding dinosaurs is extremely difficult. For the same reason, it is also very difficult to date dinosaur fossils. The overseas sites are characterized by the range of mountains, deep canyons or exposed badlands of heavily eroded terrain that can help reveal the ancient layers of preserved fossilized bones. Found west of Eramanga in southeast Queensland in 2005 by Sandy McKenzie. Although the first Australia Titan bones were excavated in 2006 and 2007 by Queensland Museum and Eramanga Natural History Museum paleontologists and volunteers. It has taken many years to compare the bones with the bones collected and stored by other museums around the world. Instead of traveling from one museum to another, scientists used 3D digital scanning technology which allowed them to virtually evaluate the bones and come up with the idea of a new species of sauropod dinosaur. Australia Titan's exact physical characteristics are still debated, although it was published that they are definitely a new species. Several of Cooper's bones were found to be crushed by the footsteps of other sauropod dinosaurs. Sauropods were quadrupedal dinosaurs that were gargantuan in size with enormous necks and tails. Australia Titan was much larger in size than other Australian sauropods, but it is thought that they were more closely related to one another than they were to other dinosaurs found elsewhere. It is still not confirmed if the four sauropods from the Winton Formation lived at the same place at the same time. They could have evolved over the time to reside in different environments, possibly never crossing their paths. For example, Australia Titan shared the same characteristics found in the Ischium between Diamantinosaurus and Wintona Titan, or the pneumatic anterior caudal vertebra in Savannasaurus and Wintona Titan. Researchers have hypothesized that this common ancestry between all four Australian sauropod taxa indicates diversification during the mid-Cretaceous and supports the recent naming of an Australian clade, Diamantina Sauria. Australia Titan was an extremely large, long-necked Titanosaurian sauropod with an estimated length reaching between 25 and 30 meters or 82 and 100 feet. The height was about 5 to 6.5 meters or 16 to 20 feet. Its weight was between 25 and 81 tons, the weight equivalent of 1,400 red kangaroos. Such large animals would have probably lived in a rich environment filled with tall trees and small shrubs. Its fossil remains are massive, but are exceptionally narrow, possibly because of being squashed by other sauropods. 
these species shared some characteristics with Titanosaurians from South America and Asia. They probably came from South America through Antarctica during some global warmth, or came from Southeast Asia and the Philippines' ancient island archipelagos. Today, the area where Australotitan lived is oil, gas and grazing country. Diamantinosaurus Matilde This sauropod's remains were found on the Eldersley Station near Winton in the Winton Formation, Queensland, in 2005 by the property owner Sandra Muir. It was dubbed the Matilda site and the bones were excavated by the Australian Age of Dinosaurs Museum of Natural History from 2006 to 2010. Diamantinosaurus was named and described in 2009 by Dr. Scott Hocknell and others. The name was derived from the fossil location of the nearby Diamantina River and the Greek word Saurus, meaning lizard. The specific name Matilda was given after the song Waltzing Matilda from a very well-known song of Banjo Peterson. The song was written and first performed in the Winton area. It is believed that Diamantinosaurus lived in the Middle Cretaceous around 100 to 95 million years ago. The Matilda site was rich in many fossil remains and not just of this sauropod. Many other fossils were discovered in the Matilda site. Diamantinosaurus's skeleton was found intermingled with the theropod Australovenator, as well as bones of crocodilimorphs and turtles lungfish tooth plates, and isolated bivalves. Diamantisaurus matildae was a titanosaur, a group of sauropods whose remains were found on each continent. Its genus was established based on a skeleton nicknamed Matilda and preserved bones of near-complete forelimbs, the right hind limb, the shoulders and pelvis, and several back vertebra and ribs. Approximately 30% of the skeleton of Matilda has been recovered, making it the most complete Cretaceous sauropod ever found in Australia. Diamantinosaurus was of a rather small size, reaching about 15 to 16 meters in length and about 2.5 meters tall at the hip. Its weight is estimated to be about 15 to 20 tons. Diamantinosaurus was characterized by having a robust build and a long neck and tail. A discovery of another Diamantinosaurus specimen, nicknamed Alex, was found at the Elliott site in 2004. However, it wasn't officially recognized as a Diamantinosaurus until 2016. Alex's skeleton was smaller than Matilda's, but anatomically almost identical. What is most important about Alex is the preserved bones from the neck that are not present in the Matilda specimen. However, the most exciting part of Alex is a large piece of the skull known as the brain case, which allows scientists to investigate the shape of the brain. This is the only sauropod skull known from Australia. Scientists were very pleased to discover a juvenile titanosaur specimen also on Eldersley Station. It was excavated by regular staff and volunteers from the museum in 2012. Most of the bones were very well preserved and located about one meter below the surface. About 10% of the complete skeleton was recovered. This was a very rare event in Australia, but also very significant globally. Although no osteoderms for Diamantinosaurus have been found yet. It is assigned to the Lysostrotia, Titanosauridae, and Saltosauridae, a group of titanosaurs characterized by having bony osteoderms in the skin, litho meaning stone, and strotia referring to skin. The museum research associate, Samantha Rigby, under the supervision of Dr. Stephen Poropat, carried out research on the juvenile. She and her team scanned each bone from the specimen, which created three-dimensional models 
that were digitally compared with other sauropod remains in the museum's collection. It was suggested that the specimen belonged to Diamantinosaurus. Its weight was estimated at around 4.2 tons. Scientists have more understanding of how the juvenile developed into an adult form. Different body parts grew at different paces, and shapes changed throughout its growing process and eventually became more robust. And of course, as a sauropod, it was a herbivorous dinosaur. Initially, it was thought to be semi-aquatic, but Diamantinosaurus was definitely a terrestrial animal. In the Cretaceous, the Aramanga Sea was disappearing in the Winton region, leaving behind extensive winding rivers, freshwater pools, oxbow lakes, swamps, and coastal estuaries within the lowlands. There is limited evidence of the dietary preference, as a skull and dentition are missing, apart from a tooth shape and wear facets. However, what is known from the Winton Formation and other areas of Cretaceous Australia was that they were around edible plants, including arocarian conifers, angiosperms, ginkgos, cycads, ferns, horsetails, and Lovelia winternesensis, an early flowering plant which grew close to the Matilda site. Fossils of Diamantinosaurus are held by the Australian Age of Dinosaurs Museum of Natural History in Winton, Queensland. Savannasaurus Eliatorum. David Elliot, a landowner, found some bones sticking out of the ground on Belmont Station near Winton, Queensland, in 2005. He returned to the site later in the day with his wife, Judy, to take a closer look at the fossil fragments. Although he wished to find a theropod fossil, it appeared that the remains were the distinctive metatarsal toe bone of a sauropod. Staff from two museums, the Australian Age of Dinosaurs Museum and Queensland Museum, prepared fossils and encased it in 17 pallets. The excavation had taken more than 10 years. Fossils of Diamantinosaurus matildae were also discovered on the same site. The fossils were estimated to be from between the Cenomanian and Turonian epochs of the Cretaceous, being around 93.9 million years ago. The fossils were estimated to be from between the Cenomanian and Turonian epochs of the Cretaceous, being around 93.9 million years ago. Savannasaurus was named and described in 2016 by Dr. Stephen Poropat and his colleagues. The specimen is fragmentary and includes one cervical and several dorsal vertebra, the sacrum, more than five caudal vertebra, many ribs, parts of the shoulder and sternum, partial front limb bones, together with a complete right front foot, most of the pelvic girdle, an ankle bone, and one bone from the hind foot. One of the many long-necked plant-eating sauropods of the mid-Cretaceous, being between 100 and 95 million years ago. Others of the same family are Diamantinosaurus matildae and Wintonotitan watsai. Savannasaurus was between 12 to 15 meters, or 39 to 49 feet long, and about 2.7 to 3 meters, or 9 to 10 feet tall at the shoulder and would have weighed around 15 to 20 tons. It had very wide hips and widely spaced stocky limbs with five toes on each foot. The fossil shows that this sauropod's neck was longer than its tail and that the torso was broad and barrel-like. The skull and teeth were missing, but it was confirmed that it was a completely herbivorous dinosaur. The only tooth found with the Savannasaurus remains belonged to a meat-eating theropod dinosaur, possibly Australovenator. Savannasaurus is closely related to the contemporary sauropod 
Diamantinosaurus, but has a slightly different build with proportionally broader belly and bigger hips. Looking at the South American sauropods, it is quite common to find several different but closely related sauropod species living alongside one another. Winton Titans probably develop different habits in terms of environmental or dietary preferences that allowed them to coexist without competing with each other for food. Wintona Titan Watsai Keith Watts, the landowner, found the specimens on Eldersley Station in 1974. He contacted the Queensland Museum upon the discovery. Watts donated bones to the museum, and the specimen was collected by Dr. Mary Wade and Andrew Elliott the same year. A few years later, in 1981, the remains of the partial skeleton were described by Walter Coombs Jr. and Ralph Molnar as a new specimen of Ostrosaurus dinosaur, which was already known since 1933. The reason for this assignment was based on a few vertebrae found near Richmond. The site near Winton was revisited by paleontologists in 2004. At the time, it was owned by Keith Watt's daughter, Sandra Muir, and her husband, Ian. Paleontologists realized the collected materials from the site were of the same origins to that of the pieces excavated during the 1970s. They decided to come back and carry out a larger scale excavation, which was conducted in 2006 and led by the Australian Age of Dinosaurs Museum. As a result, more bones were discovered deeper within the site. The new bones and that from the 1970s were assessed and compared, and it became evident that it did not belong to an Ostrosaurus dinosaur. In 2009, Dr. Scott Hocknell and others named this specimen Wintoni Titan Watsai. The meaning of the name stands for the area where the fossil remains were discovered by Keith Watts. The site was located near Winton Town in Queensland, and Titan is a word in Greek for giant. The specimen had been lovingly named Clancy by the museum staff. In 2015, Dr. Stephen Poropat and colleagues reassessed Wintoni Titan and described the differences to another sauropod that lived at the same time, the Diamantinosaurus. These fossils of Wintoni Titan Watsai consisted of the remains of the hip, ribs, skull, and partial bones of the limbs. Although Clancy's specimen was not very well preserved, it was almost complete by Australian standards. The state of the fossils made it very difficult for paleontologists to understand where to place Wintoni Titan on the sauropod family tree. That said, it was clear that it belonged to a group of sauropods called Titanosauriforms, but that it is not a true titanosaur. Some of the Titanosauriforms were the largest Australian dinosaurs. The sauropod was classified as somphospondylins on the basis of the internal texture of their vertebra in front of the hips. These forms were more basile than Diamantinosaurus and lived from the late Jurassic to the late Cretaceous period. In 2011, it was believed that some of the Wintoni Titan specimens had armored plates. The bones were reassessed and identified as fragments of vertebra rather than osteoderms. Wintona Titan was more lightly built than Diamantinosaurus. They were 10 to 15 tons, or 10,000 to 15,000 kilograms in weight. Some scientists say that they could reach up to 20 tons, 
or 20,000 kilograms. They were also very long in size as compared to other dinosaurs at that time. These sauropod length ranges lie between 49 and 55 feet or 15 to 17 meters. It was 11.5 feet or 3.5 meters tall at the shoulders. These huge sauropods were plant eaters. The specimens had a long neck and tail with a small hollow type skull and four legs. Its forelegs were not very muscular and strong, and the hind legs have not been found yet. It is thought that like other sauropods, Wintonotitans were a solitary dinosaur. It lived alongside Australovenator, Diamantinosaurus, Ankylosaurus, and Hypsilophodons. This family member of Titanosauriform fossils is now kept in the Queensland Museum of Winton. Queensland, Australia. These videos take a very long time to create. If you would like to support the channel and assist in improving it, then do please subscribe and give us a like, and consider joining our Patreon. Links in the description.